Hi, my name is Peter Bross. I'm one of the developer advocates for Autodesk Platform Services. And in this video, I wanna give you a quick introduction into an interesting API management platform called Postman and give you some examples of how you could use it when working with Autodesk Platform Services. Now, this is the first of two videos that will cover the topic of Postman. And in this first part, we will cover the basic functionality of Postman and give you some examples of um, using Postman to access some of the standard services in APS, such as OSS or model derivative. Once again, Postman is a very popular API management platform. It comes with this very powerful visual client that lets you communicate with APIs using different protocols, such as REST API, GraphQL, gRPC, and others. And it's a great tool for managing your collection of API requests, collaborating on those collections with your team, testing, experimenting. Um, and it also gives you some basic automation and code generation functionality as we see later. In my case, I already have Postman installed, so I'm just gonna start it up. There we go, this is the default interface of Postman. Um, this is where you can start building your collections of requests and environments. Uh, we'll explain what those are in a, in a moment. Let's start by creating a new collection. I'm gonna call it Post Collection. And here we can either start building our requests right away, or we can actually start creating folder structures, which later on can help with organizing your requests in, in case your collection has a large number of them. So let me create a new folder. I'm gonna call it OSS. Let's say this is the folder where we will define all our OSS related requests. And here, I'm gonna create a new request and I'm gonna call it list buckets. Let's say this is where we want to define our OSS list bucket endpoint. Uh, as you can see in the upper half of this request page, this is where you define all the inputs, all the parameters for the request itself. Things like HTTP method, the actual URL, any kind of query parameters or path variables, um, any kind of authorization that is needed there, um, extra headers, payload, maybe if you have a JSON payload that you need to send with the request or form data or URL encoded data, you can actually specify it using the key value pairs in this table. Um, and some additional features. Uh, maybe one thing to mention here, scripts. Um, this is a nice little feature of Postman that lets you execute small snippets of JavaScript code either right before a request is made or immediately after a response is received. Um, and what you can do is you can actually define these scripts either at the request level, at the folder level, or at the collection level. And that basically means that uh, if you create any kind of, define any kind of scripts at the collection level, these will be executed for any requests within that collection or within the specific folder, let's say. All right, so let's head over to our developer portal, the APSAutodesk.com. You can go to our documentation section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for data management API because this is where our OSS endpoints are documented. And I'm going to go to the reference guide, REST API reference, OSS buckets. So let's say this get buckets endpoint, this is what we want to add to Postman. This is the endpoint for listing all buckets in OSS that my application has access to. I'm going to copy the URL to Postman. You can also see that in this particular case, this endpoint requires a two-legged token uh, because the authentication context here is set to app only and that the access token that we will later need to include with this request needs to have this bucket call and read scope. Um, there's some additional parameters, optional query parameters like region, limit, start at. We can add those to Postman as well by adding this question mark in the URL and something like, let's say limit equals 16. This will add the limit parameter into this table under the param section and we can toggle it off so that it doesn't appear in the URL, but it's still kept here so that other people who might be interested in using this endpoint, know that such an option is available. <clears throat> okay, now the important part, authorization. So as you probably know already, uh, APS uses uh, OAuth 2.0 standard for um, authentication. And here again in Postman, we have similar to scripts options to either configure the authorization at the request level, at the folder level or at the collection level. And again, if you specify any kind of authorization at the collection level, it will be reused by any requests unless they override the authorization setup in any custom way. So this is a great way to reuse one setup instead of you having to 
configure the same auth um, for every single request. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a new, set up a new authorization at the collection level. But before we do that, let's take a look at this other part here environments in Postman. This is where you can define your environments, which are basically collections of variables. And you can later reuse these variables across all your different requests using a special double curly brace syntax, as I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, this is really helpful because, again, you don't need to hard code things like your credentials into every individual request, uh, or you don't need to repeat the same kind of config setting into every single request. Instead, you can define these values in your environment and reuse them. And uh, that also then you can define more of these environments and you can toggle between them using this dropdown in the top right corner. So let's go ahead and create a new environment. I'm gonna call it test environment. And this is where you can now start defining your variables. So I'm gonna create a couple of variables. I'm gonna call them APS underscore client underscore ID. Another one, APS underscore client underscore secrets. And another one called APS underscore scopes. These three variables are everything we need for now to set up the authorization so that Postman knows what are our actual APS credentials and what kind of scopes we want to generate tokens for. Now, one more thing we can do is we can toggle the type for the client secret to secret, which basically means that any values we set to these variables will not appear anywhere in the UI. You'll just see the, the dots there. All right, so with that, let's go back to our dev portal. And under my profile, I'm gonna to go to applications. Uh, this is where you can manage your APS applications and credentials. I've already created an app for this demo, so I'm just gonna open it and I can use the client credentials that were generated for me here. So let me copy the client ID, add it, to the APS client ID variable in Postman. Let me also grab the client secret and I'm gonna paste it to both the initial and current value in Postman. And for scopes, for now, for this demo, we're just gonna use OSS to let's say list all the buckets that my app has access to and all objects in those buckets. So for now, let's, let me just add bucket read and data read scope. That's, that's all that's needed there. <clears throat> all right, so we have our test environment defined, we can now switch to it and if we go back to our test collection we want to we can start uh, configuring our authorization so in the auth type we're going to switch from no auth to OAuth 2.0 um, you can leave all these settings um, set to their defaults here this is where we will be able to eventually see our auto generated token but before we can do that we need to tell postman how to actually generate our access tokens and we can do that in the configure new token section here. Okay, first we want to name our tokens in a certain way. I'm gonna call them APS two-legged so that I know that these tokens are actually generated using the two-legged OAuth flow. In the grant type, we wanna switch from authorization code, which is what we call three-legged. And that's something we're gonna cover in the second video. We want to change that to client credentials, which is the actual, what we call two-legged flow. And what we need to provide here is the URL that Postman needs to call when, when we want to generate a new token uh, and the client ID, client secrets, and the list of scopes. So for that, let me go back to our documentation, maybe open the documentation in a separate tab, and this time search for our authentication API. And once again, I'm gonna to navigate to the reference guide, REST API token, and this, post token endpoint here is what we can call to actually generate our tokens. I'm gonna copy the, the URL, paste it into Postman. And now here, instead of hard coding our client ID and client ID secret, I can actually use the double curly bracket syntax to reference one of the environment variables that we have set up. Same for client secret, I'm, I can say APS client secret, you can see that now if I hover it, I don't actually see the value there. Um, and for scopes, I can say double curly brackets, APS scopes. There we go. This is it for our um, authorization setup. So now we can actually use this button to create a new token. You can see that the operation was successful and we can now say, use this token. Now, if you scroll back up, you can see that now our APS two-legged token 
is populated. We can see that it expires in roughly one hour from now. We can actually just hit the refresh button here to just recreate that token if needed. Uh, and now this auth configuration will be available to all the requests within the test collection. So with that, let's give it a try. Now our request for listing buckets should retrieve the access token from the collection. And if we execute this request, you can see we get a 200 OK response. So the bottom half is always showing you the response of your call. Um, one more nice thing you can do for your requests on the right side, you can head over to this code section. Um, and this is where you can actually have Postman generate a code snippet for a large variety of programming languages, let's say for Python, to exit, to make this API call from your Python application or from your PHP application or from your Java application. So this is really helpful in situations where maybe you're using a language that we don't provide an SDK for. So currently we provide SDKs for .NET and Node.js. So if you're working with any of the other languages here, like Go, um, you could potentially use these code snippets generated for you uh, by Postman to build, to introduce these API calls into your own Go program. All right, let's try and add one more endpoint. I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to call it list objects. So let's say now we want to introduce this other API call that will give us a list of all objects within a specific OSS bucket. For that, let me go back to the documentation. I'm going to look for get objects. This is the official endpoint for getting the list of all objects within a bucket. Now, once again, let me grab this endpoint. And you can notice here that there is a dynamic component in this path, and that is this bucket key that will change depending on which bucket you want to list the objects for. Uh, in this documentation, it's indicated by the column prefix. And it just so happens that uh, Postman actually considers the column as a path variable as well. So you can see as soon as I specify my endpoint here, bucket key is actually add it to this table of path variables. Um, so once again, we can maybe take a look at some other query parameters. There is a bunch of optional uh, query strings again, like limit, begins with, or start add. So we can once again specify, let's say, limit equals 16, which will make that parameter available in this table. We can toggle it off for now, just keep it there for later. All right, now what this means is that if we want to call this API, we need to provide some value for this bucket key path variable. Now we could either hard code it here or we could also turn this into a variable. Uh, and one way to do that is before actually, def without defining the variable in our environment, we can just use our double curly braces and say something like, bucket key. And what I like to do is use this um, lower key uh, case uh, for like runtime variables and use the, the upper case for anything that is part of the environment at all times. And now we can see if it's colored in red because Postman currently doesn't know what this bucket key variable is. Uh, so when ho after hover hovering it, we can actually choose to add the variable into either our current environment or to a collection because you can actually specify variables at different scopes, either at the environment level or maybe at the collection level, in which case the variable will be available for all requests within that collection, or global level, in which case the variable will be accessible to all collections of all requests in your workspace. For now, I'm just gonna say, I wanna add this bucket key variable to my current environment, which is test environment. And we can double check that by going back to the list of environments we can see that now bucket key has been added, but there is currently no value there. That's all right. So now let's try something. Um, let's go back to our original request where we got the list of buckets. What we can do is we can select the name, the bucket key in here, right click and say, set this value as my bucket key variable. So now if I go back to the environment, you can see that bucket key has now been set to our bucket. 
And now I can go back to my list objects request. And here I can see that the double curly brace syntax is now blue, telling me that, okay, there is now a value for this bucket key variable. And with that, since again, our request here inherits authorization uh, config from the collection itself, we can just go ahead and execute it. There we go. Now we see that, let me maximize Postman here, that I have one item in my OSS bucket, which is a Revit file called RAC basic sample project. All right, that is it for manual creation of requests in Postman. Now, one interesting thing is that you don't actually need to build these collections of requests and environments from scratch. You can actually import these because if somebody else had already created a collection of requests and or environments, they can export them into a Postman JSON format. And then later you can actually import them into your own workspace. So let's try that now. If you head over to our official GitHub organization, that is github.com slash autodesk dash platform dash services, um, you can go to the repositories list and search for Postman. And you will see that there is a large number of repositories that provide Postman collections for different APIs, let's say issues APIs, ACC admin APIs, model properties APIs. We can try one of these. Uh, you will typically find just a bunch of JSON files with the Postman uh, data you can import into your own workspace. In this case, you can see there is one JSON file called Postman Collection JSON and another one called Postman Environment JSON. So let's try and import this collection of requests into our workspace. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this raw button here to get the raw JSON URL. I'm going to go back to Postman. I'm going to say import a collection. And I'm going to paste the URL in this field. And as soon as it's done, you can see that we now have another collection apart from our test one called Model Properties API. And in here, uh, you can see that one of my colleagues has built this folder structure that organizes the API calls in an, in a way that you know you probably want to follow these calls in your own application. Uh, we can we can try and explore. You can see that in this case. Uh, Somebody also configured the authorization at the collection level, and that there's also some variables defined at the collection level. Um, and if we try and look at some of the endpoints, again, you can see that in this particular case, this API request um, expects certain variables called base domain, project ID without B, one folder ID, and da 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 da. da. Uh, now, these are all red, right? Because we're still using our test environment that does not define any of these variables. So if we wanted to really start using this model properties API collection, we would also need to import the environment. So let me go back to GitHub and look at this other Postman environment JSON. And then once again, I'm going to get the raw JSON URL and use it to import this environment into Postman. So I'm going to environments, import, and I'm going to paste the URL in this field one more time. And you can see that we now have this model properties API copy environment imported from the JSON. This is where we get the full list of variables that those model property requests expect. So this is where we would need to populate the actual variables with our own client ID, client secret, project IDs, and folder IDs, and things like that. Okay, and with that, uh, thank you for your attention.